this is going to be a good one for me because I don't know how to make people like me. I don't have friends. Do you, Perrin? Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm certainly not an expert on the matter, but uh, we, we, I think throughout the course of the episode, we'll discover some tips and things that can work for you guys. Right. I, this is gonna, This is going to be a really fun one because it's important and I don't think it's really talked about enough. We've gone over, you know, all the technical aspects of, you know, getting your live streaming set up, how to make it look good. But at the end of the day, it's still you that has to sell your product. It's still you that has to sell yourself, essentially. So let's dive in. We will link the article, by the way, after the show, as we always do, the one that we're kind of focusing on. And this one is from minicam.com, which neither of us have used. I've actually heard some decent things about it. So we're going to trust them. And we're going to start with this one, which I actually think is good. It's not one that I would have considered to put on my list, but recapping key points from your stream. And I read, many live streams are packed with information and can get a bit overwhelming at times. If that's your case, it will serve you well to recap key points of your content now and then. It helps keep the viewers on the same page as you and no one is left behind. Okay, see, that's actually a good point because something that I've noticed when I've watched a lot of live streams is the amount of inside, quote unquote, inside jokes that happen later on in the stream about something in the past. And it does make you feel left out if you don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, inside jokes could be a whole, um, that could be a whole thing we could discuss. But um, So f I know for me, whenever I see new people entering, um, there's always, you know, kind of a, a list of functions that then suddenly become important. And it's acknowledging if, if they chat at the same time, you don't, you don't want to point out like new people coming to a stream. If they're just lurking, you don't necessarily want to draw attention to them because they might not want to engage. They might just want to lurk and watch, which is okay. Um, so normally I look and see, are they engaging with me? If so, I definitely need to, uh, I need to respond to them and, and, and introduce them or welcome them into the stream. And then the next thing is, uh, it's normally looking at letting them know what we're up to. Like, what are we doing here? What are they jumping into at this point? Cause maybe they came in, you know, an hour and a half into my two hour stream and I've already done a bunch of stuff. Maybe I've already done what the stream title says that I've done. So I need to bring them into speed on what's going on now. So normally I will try to hit what we're doing. Um, and a lot of times they'll ask too, they're like, they'll, they'll ask like uh, what I'm doing specifically or what I'm looking at or why I'm doing something. And I just start talking about it and kind of recap. Um, it helps to do that at different points through the stream, especially if you have a longer version stream. That's perfect. That actually leads us right into the next one. Answer their questions. You know, uh, and it says as well as asking questions, which is another one we'll get to in a second, you can actually flip the table and tell them to send in their questions, which I think is something that everybody seems to do. And then throughout your live stream towards the end, or you can reply to some of their questions live, their curiosity will also tell you a lot about them and it can serve as fuel for you to create new content. I think that is key. That last sentence is answering their questions can also be uh, motivation for future videos. Like if you're getting a lot of the same question, then you know that, you know, this is something that people are obviously interested in. They may not know a whole lot about the particular topic and that can kind of, uh, kind of guide you in which direction to aim your content in. So this is one of those things I think that actually gets more difficult as you get bigger because you get more and more people coming and asking the same question and then you have to repeat answers to the same question. And so that can, then that's a different challenge. I'm going to address it from the more uh, beginner point of view. And in, in the beginning, whenever you're getting asked those questions, there's a, the best way to do it is to address the person asking the question by name. They okay, so-and-so just asked, you know, and then I normally re read out the question that they asked me. I don't necessarily just answer it. I read it out. Uh, I mostly do that because I'm streaming to multiple different platforms. And if someone asked me a question on Facebook, um, not my Twitch viewers aren't going to know that it happened. So I have to repeat, but since I've been doing that, it got me into this nice practice of just repeating out the question on my stream itself. And if you go back and then watch the VOD of my stream on YouTube, it makes a lot more sense because I f vocalize the question and then I answer it. And so you can tell I'm talking to a viewer, even though you can't, I don't have the chat on screen. Um, cause I do like a minimalist thing. So, you can tell that I'm talking to a viewer and instead of not knowing what the question is and just hearing my answer, you get the whole thing. You get the question and you get the answer and you know that someone, you also get the effect that someone was watching my stream and asked a question that I answered. That's the best way to do it. Hi, kitty cat. Um, oh, Norman's here. <laughs> By the way, 
if you, the real secret to getting people to like you is I have a cat in your life. <laughs> yeah. So oh, real quick, I want to bridge. So we're talking about the different engagement strategies on, on stream, but we tied in the stream on how to get people to like you. If we haven't made the connection yet for you guys, one of the ways to do it is to be engaging. And so these are small tips on how to talk more and to be more engaging. And that's, that's one of the starts here of being more entertaining on, 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 screen on camera to being more engaging and more dynamic. One of the things that they actually recommend, and again, we're on uh, an article on minicam.com. I'll post the article later because it's really worth reading. They've got a lot of good points in here. Have you ever done this, Perrin? Get actually somebody else, like a community manager or a friend or so, to kind of go through the engagements for you. I uh, think this would be probably more efficient for larger streamers, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually don't like that one um, because it puts this layer of separation between you, the entertainer, and the audience. Whereas, so it to, to me, and this is my opinion on it, I guess, is, is that looks like from an outside perspective, from a viewer perspective, that the streamer is too, like, it's like almost better than chat. They're, they're too far detached that they need someone else to handle their chat responsibility for them. So to me, that doesn't even look, that's not even direct engagement. You're, now you're, uh, it, it's, it starts to go in air towards this more insider stream. Um, and I think you lose a lot of value that a lot of viewers are looking for. They, they wanna ask a question and they want the streamer to answer them and talk to them directly. That's the whole value in it. So if they're actually talking to someone else who's fielding the question, I don't think that that has the same effect. I haven't really seen that played out too much. Maybe I'm totally off base here. I, I mean, haven't either. That's why I'm kind of kind of surprised that they actually had it listed here. I've done something close. I've had like a, my brother come on stream and he just helps me feel discussion a little bit about like the game I'm playing because normally I, I have a pretty Im informational approach. So I will get in depth into like mechanics and things like that. And he, he knows a lot about it too. So I normally will have him come on so I can have another intelligent mind so we can kind of have like a critical discussion about like game features and things like that. Um, but not in a way where it's like we've got insider jokes or anything like that. It's just, it, it helps facilitate more of an informative thing. Like, like we do on this podcast I'm a little bit right. more good at this style. Um, and yeah, so I don't know about that one. Uh, that one, uh, that one just seems odd for like the Twitch at, uh, and, and live streaming environment. Yeah. Like I said, I, th I think the only way that that seems really plausible is to actually have, you know, where it's just literally impossible for you to actually look at the chat and continue your gameplay. You know, then I can understand if you have somebody kind of picking and selecting and, you know, sliding the questions over to you, the, the questions that will create the most engagement in chat that can be beneficial. But, you know, if you, if you're a smaller live streamer, I, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, a good one here, make it fun. Well, obviously, that's essentially very obvious. And it says another tactic to get your audience engaged with your live stream is to deliver entertaining live video. Duh. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be a comedy show. Driving your audience to take simple action can make streaming more fun. For instance, you can create a challenge with a giveaway at the end of a live stream. Ask viewers to participate using a hashtag hosting things related to the challenge of their social profiles and so on. And then a giveaway gives them motivation to keep watching and gives you some free publicity. I don't know about you. I've never been too crazy about using the hashtag for, you know, live streaming or anything like that. I, 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 I see the benefit to hashtags, but if you're a small streamer or something like that, uh, I think it can actually be detrimental when you go and click on the hashtag and you see you maybe have one post or when, you know, that one other person that makes that post that they're the only one doing it. Yeah. Um, hashtags for streaming really, unless you're using it to, to poke fun at something, I guess. Right. Uh, yeah. Otherwise this, uh, I don't really see a point. So this is, let's open this one up a little bit. We're talking about, okay. you know, uh, this is a big one and this is, this is an important one, how to be entertaining. I mean, fun is is where a lot of people get internet feel entertained a lot of people get entertainment from and this, this article is just saying you know make your stream fun that's not really <laughs> giving us much to go on because i think we all know that but that's part of the challenge how do you make your stream truly fun for other people coming in 
how do you make it, uh, you know, we're saying how to make it engaging, which can help make it fun, but how do you have fun with it? And so uh, I guess the way I look at that is I look at, first of all, me or the streamer coming into it, am I having fun? Because if I'm not having fun with it, then no one else is going to have fun with it. Uh, And so there's there's all sorts of stuff that goes along with that. Um, In terms of fun, it's definitely more fun if you have more energy. Right. And I'll still stream when I don't have energy. And so then it becomes a challenge of like, how do I have fun when I'm really tired, but I still want to stream. Right. Um, I'm sure you guys have all been in that scenario. So, and it becomes in, uh, with other challenges, like how do I maximize my energy for a stream? And so that I have a lot of it so that it is more fun because I'm injecting a lot more energy into it. A lot of the entertainment value can come from our own charisma. And if we're not one of those types of people that just has a really high innate charisma, you know, um, and you know, the types, you know, the types I'm talking about, I am, I wouldn't say I'm not one of those types. So I've always had to kind of find ways to supplement and, and, to, and have that kind of on camera energy to be magnetic, to be charismatic. You had you ha- something that if you des- don't, if you might not have it innately, you can kind of learn it. Um, and you can do things to increase your energy. You can do things to, um, mentally to have more fun with what you're doing and you can choose the things that you do on your streams, particularly the things that you know are going to be fun. And one of the things that, um, I like is trying to get other people who are watching me to play the game with me. Cause if I can get that, I can make it a lot more fun. Yeah. I can choose to do things with them as a group, uh, that I know are going to be more fun. And sometimes it's not, then it's not always necessarily me too. I can follow a little bit on what uh, a viewer is going to think is fun and we, we can go their direction a little bit. And so you have to be able to, there's a lot of skills involved with it in, in terms of like having fun with it. First of all, you have to figure out how can, you can enjoy it after doing the same thing every day over and over and over and over again. And we've talked about that on previous episodes. So that's a challenge. Um, that you have to figure out. You have to figure out, you know, I do mine early in the morning. I do this show early in the morning. How do I wake up and have energy <laughs> and do this? Um, you know, there's some, some tips that I've learned, whether they're helpful or not. Uh, smile. Sometimes smiling is very simple, a way to convey energy and excitement. And if you're not smiling, you're probably not enjoying what you're doing. So try smiling a lot. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else. Uh, coffee in the morning is great, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes a coffee in the in early evening, if you're going to do an evening stream too, helps me a lot too. Uh, and so I think why a lot of gamers do energy drinks. There's so many tips. It's so personalized. It depends so much on your demeanor, your personality coming to it. And you just have to be good at kind of assessing what are your strengths with that? And then like, what are your weaknesses, you know, where you can kind of supplement in there. So that was all over the place, but hopefully it was still kind no, of helpful. It was, it was actually right on because I'm actually going to cross-reference now a uh, Times article on how to make people like you. And we can, I, I can kind of compare this to streaming and what you just said. And the first one I'm going to start with is go for the laugh every time. Now, this may sound like that's a, not a good idea. Let's read what they have to say and then I'll fill in the blank. It's hard to hate a jokester or someone who has a carefree approach to life. Usually most people like that. Or hold on. The most like people are those that can fill a room with laughter. It might not be your nature to joke around. That's okay. Just make sure you are ready to see the humor in something. Be someone who can easily, who can laugh easily and smile often and you'll win people over. Now, uh, that sounds very intimidating, even for me to sit here and say it, because the last thing you want to do is say something and then just completely fall on your ass, you know, completely just fall on your face. And I, I like to compare this to this is a good comparison for stand up comedy when when you're watching um, you know someone who's just getting into stand up comedy and they 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 go they throw a joke out there and it completely bombs all right the first thing that they tend to do just because there's not the experience there is just completely lose all their energy kind of become like a turtle go back on their shell and then just work to get through their sets so they can get off the stage that's actually not what you want to do it's still, yes, you, you may fall on your face when you're doing that if the joke doesn't land, but keeping that energy 
is what's going to keep people staying around. Because when you lose that energy, it's like you were saying, it is so easy to tell. And it just becomes so uncomfortable. That's why when you go watch a polished comedian that's working out new material and they bomb, that's, that's why people still laugh because their energy is keeping it, is, keep, is keeping it alive. They, they don't fall into that tunnel. So I think it's important to, and maybe Perrin, maybe you have a different view on this, to keep going. Even if the jokes aren't working, that's a much more likable personality than becoming a turtle in your shell. Yeah, I mean, you can't, uh, I, I agree with the, the reaction would definitely be not to change suddenly. Like, cause once you, once you consciously realize that it's, it was like a, a bad joke or not funny, I guess. And that changes your demeanor that actually adds more impact to it. The joke's not being good. You want to, you want to leave off of that as much as possible. Normally, if I'm in a scenario like that, I just kind of bring it back onto myself and I kind of like laugh at myself for having done such a bad joke. I think it's easier for me since I'm a dad and dads have this kind of synonymous thing with bad dad jokes. So, uh, it's, it's easy for me to be like, that was just a real bad dad joke. I'm, I'm like, I'm embarrassed. Oh my God. And just kind of roll with it. And, um, don't like, not, don't beat yourself up for it. But, but I think sometimes a really bad joke is funny in that it's just really, it's, it's terrible. It didn't work at all. And that's, that can be funny. And that can, even, even the fact that it feels awkward or uncomfortable can be funny. And if you just roll off that with the same energy and that takes some, that takes some skill. I think that takes some practice. Um, I think you're right, Ross. I think take it from, take it from comedians who, who practice this thing for a living. They know what they're doing. Try to try to keep consistent with the same energy. Try not to let it impact, uh, you know, your, your vibe, the, the, the entertainment, your smile, keep, just keep the smile going. In fact, the fact that you messed up, you probably smile more that you messed up because, yeah. you know, to compensate for, for that. Uh, I guess I would say um, the other thing there is, is, and I'm <laughs> guilty of this. Don't laugh at your own jokes. It ruins them sometimes or try not to like something you're going to laugh on stream. And that's good. But if you, if you do something that's funny, try to ride it out and let the other people laugh. Uh, that, that was one thing um, that uh, comedians had taught me early on, uh, you know, my group of circle group of friends, I had a lot who were really, really good. They were never like professional comedians, but they just had a good sense of humor. And one thing they would tell me is like, don't laugh at your own joke. You know, when you put it out there, whether you meant it to be funny or not, try not, to, even if it's really funny, try not to. I mean, there's those rare occasions where like something is so funny that it can be funny that you're trying so hard not to laugh, but you end up laughing anyway. But um, try not to laugh at your own jokes if you can. Um, but that doesn't mean don't smile. That doesn't mean don't snicker at other things. But if you're going to put something out that is funny, let it stand on its own. You don't have to guide it with your own laughter. I 100% agree with that. There are only two comedians. I, I'm totally against, by the way, comedians laughing at their own joke. There are two comedians that make it work perfectly, and that's Kevin Hart and Dave Chappelle. And I can guarantee you that anybody listening to this is not them. Uh, if you are, hit me up. <laughs> um, Subtle. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good one. Okay, Perrin, when you're, when you're watching a live stream, you know, like a popular streamer, how often do you see people criticize their gameplay? Like the you sucks and, you know, that was terrible. Oh, all the time. That's a, isn't right. that what ch like chat's job is to do that <laughs> the entire time, right? <laughs> like that's yeah. how Twitch works. <laughs> like we're going to sit here and pretend like the gaming community is not toxic when it comes to that, even if they are just being joking. So, how, what in your opinion is the right way to handle that? Do you get defensive? Like, well, I don't suck. It was just bad gameplay. It was lag and you know, everything like that. Or, or do you go, yeah, I'm, I'm really terrible at this. This is, I'm, I'm terrible. And, and then play off of that. You play off of it. I mean, yeah. I've seen, I've seen streamers make their, their, uh, career off of this dynamic alone, right? This dynamic of, and this is where you get streams that kind of allow backseat gaming and it can be really fun. You get streamers who are not, they know they're not amazing gamers and that's okay. And, they, and you embrace this, right? And the, so I've seen some streamers, uh, the one on the, the, the top of my head is Strippin, who, um, who does this really, really well. And there's, so he plays lots of different games and he's not always like amazing at it. And he just embraces it. And it's funny because the chat will troll him for being bad and he just trolls the chat back. And, you know, don't always say like, I'm terrible. 
because chat's not always going to be right and their criticisms troll them back say no chat you're being dumb this this is this is what it is or if you think it's right you know you still got to do your thing you still got to play the game the way you're going to play it uh whether it's right or wrong and chat can be right or wrong about that like that whole dynamic is so much fun to play with that try it in so many different ways but certainly don't get discouraged and don't get uh, actually, it's okay to get a little mad at chat, but don't get discouraged and don't feel offended by it. That's the important thing. They A lot of time they're coming in there to criticize you, not because they're actually being critical, because they want to. They want that dynamic. They want to see that how that dynamic is going to play out. And you're going to win them over by how you engage with that. Whether, like, how funny is it to troll you as, as the game player? And how much fun can they have doing that? How well do you take it? Do you take it and make it more funny? Do you get insulted and get angry? And sometimes that works too. Sometimes they like that. And sometimes that is your whole kind of shtick is you're supposed to get really, really angry and mad and rage quit and stuff like that. That there are so many different ways to play around with that dynamic. That's something that I think as you kind of evolve your audience and they start growing a little bit bigger, you can explore more and see what's going to work for you. But definitely, um, don't uh, feel discouraged or offended. Now, there are other people coming in straight to be offensive. That's different. So you want to have moderators take care of that and understand what the what that difference looks like. But a lot of times people are coming in trashing our gameplay because that's part of gaming culture. That's part of that's part of, you know, how we get better at games. That's part of yeah. how we play games together is we we shit talk each other to build each other up and have fun. And so take it that way. Think of it. Think of it like your best friend who's trash talking you because you're having fun because he wants to, he wants you to be like, no, I'm better than you. I'm going to kick your ass. Right. So um, I, that I love that dyna dynamic. That's one of my favorite things to kind of like watch and live streams is how the chat works with the streamer and that particular thing. You could probably do like collegiate studies on how that works. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Uh, it's it's like you said, uh, I've I've brought that at this point. This is how I handle trolls and stuff on Twitter. And I love that you just mentioned it now. If you look at the people who are trolling, you're the people in your chat, no matter what they say. If you look at them like they are your best friend and already act that way, then nine out of 10 times, you're going to bring out what the actual intent of their comment was. And th this is where you have to be careful. And I'm not here. None of us are here to say what you should and should not be offended by. However, the reality of the situation is if you show discomfort on your stream, it's going to make your viewers uncomfortable as well. And unfortunately, that's just that's just a sad reality of it. So if you are truly offended by something, you know, maybe, you know, for the sake of your stream, uh, you know, just try and move past it as fast as you can. And the last one ooh, we've been God half hour. All right, here we go is uh, and this one says use people's names, but I'm just going to categorize it to be more personal with your audience. And Perrin, you do a great job with this. I know like, you always refer to people by their names or by their username and stuff like that. And then you always, you know, you, you don't make this, you don't make it that dynamic. Like, well, you're here to watch me. I'm the star. No, you, you flip it around and then ask them questions. You make the stream about everyone and you make it personal. So I do this in real life too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when, when, what, what do you do when you sit down and have a conversation with someone, you know, like over lunch or something, are you genuinely interested in, you know, things that are going on in their life? Or do you just want to talk about the things that you want to talk about in your life? And that, so this just comes down to, you know, it, just look at yourself constructively and, and what you do in normal social discourse. For me, I am genuinely interested in what other people have going on. And so when viewers come in, and you know they come into my stream and they're coming and watching star citizen the first thing i'm curious about is a are they do they already play and b what ships do they have i mean that's like the most interesting thing to me i want to know what other ships people like in this game when they come in and watch my stream and i'm talking about star citizen because that's what i stream normally so uh but that extends to other games too when they when and and not even just the game itself but um, you know, I have a viewer come, uh, come in and say, you know, I uh, just got off work and I'll be like, oh, was it, you know, was it a good day? Was it, did, was it kind of shitty? Did you get a lot of stuff done? And they'll tell me like, I got a bunch of stuff done. I feel super accomplished. I'm like, oh man, you know, and then I can kind of add in, you know, maybe how my day was with it a little bit. I said, oh, I got a lot accomplished, but 
I feel like I still have so much more to do and I don't, you know, then you can begin to have a real conversation with them. But I always started by having them give and share a, a little bit. And you do that by being genuinely interested in your viewer and their, and their lives. Now, be careful getting too personal. If I ask a more yeah. personal question, I'm normally like, hey, is it, you know, I'm normally like, is it okay? If I ask that, if not, don't worry about it, you know? Um, or I say like, hopefully I'm not getting too personal or something like that so that they know that I'm at least being considerate there. But, um, so just have some tact when it comes to being more personal. Um, like when you're asking about someone's family or when you're asking about a significant other or something like that, you know, be careful treading that territory, but there's lots of ground that you can cover that isn't like that, like jobs, um, you know, like how their day was, you know, well, like where they live, that can be a little personal, but most, mostly it's not. Um, what's your address and a list of your fears? <laughs> no, just normally, I just, I don't really ask them like general region. Like right. where are you, I just say, where are you from? So they answer it in however yeah. way they feel comfrable. Right. They answer yeah, it. That, from and that's good. That's their, good generalization. Yeah. Their state, their country, uh, you know, they, they rarely ever say like the town. They'll just say they're from like central Wisconsin or something like that. And that's all that I needed or wanted to know anyway. Uh, well, I certainly didn't need to, but uh, I, I'm curious to where people around the world are watching me from. And so that curiosity leads me to ask. So I guess for anyone um, looking at that, just figure out how you can genuinely be interested in your viewers. They're not, don't look at them as they're just there to support you. And they're just a word on the screen. There's a human being there who's coming to watch you. And if you treat them as such, they're very much more likely going to be coming back to support you more. So show some genuine interest um, in them, show some genuine, especially early on. I know this gets harder as you get bigger to show like a genuine interest in like, when you've got like 10,000 people watching you, some, some, that's kind of impossible. I mean, you can still show genuine interest, just not for every single one of them, there's thousands of them. But in the beginning, early on, that's how you're gonna build up your stream. That's how you're gonna build up your concurrent viewership is by building kind of those social relationships through the internet. Right. Are you streaming Star Citizen this morning? Uh, yeah. Uh, it should be happening in about half an hour or so. I normally do around 10 a.m. So Nice. Where can people find that? Uh, Cause Twitch, I, think, I think it's a good example for people to go watch how you how you carry and present yourself on there. Yeah. Um, Twitch.tv slash Ashrel, S-H-R-A-L, uh, Facebook.com slash Ashrel Digital, A-S-H-R-A-L-D-I, you know, digital. I'm not going to spell that. I can't spell. Um, what's the other one? Uh, Mixer.com slash Ashrel. Uh, also my Twitter, Actual Digital. Sometimes I do there and then um, YouTube, but I don't have a username there yet. So that's an arbitrary link. Don't worry about that one. If you look up Actual Digital on YouTube too. I'm basically the same everywhere. If you Google it, you'll find my live stuff at some point. Yeah, go watch him. Take some notes on how he carries and presents himself and then practice on doing that You know, with yourself if you're a smaller streamer like he, like he, like he was talking about. Obviously, you know, if you want to go back and watch this, it's difficult to do on Twitter because you can't really rewind or fast forward, but you can find live replays of all of our shows on YouTube. Just search for the Digital Drop Podcast, or you can find us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, everywhere that podcasts are available. If you want the full audio version, go check us out. Hit us with that five-star rating. We appreciate it. And we will be back tomorrow. Good streaming, everybody.